Well, holy guacamole, guys. I literally went to the Dollar Tree today to just get some supplies for shipping. I also uh, sell on eBay some. and So, I, obviously, we all know Dollar Tree has Blu-rays and DVDs from time to time. So, you got to be there when the getting's good. A lot of times it's picked over, even in the area I live in. I'm not like a Dollar Tree uh, disciple, if you will. I don't go and track down 20... Dollar Trees in a 30 mile radius to try to hit them all up. I'm that guy that goes to one once in a while and if I get lucky, great. If I don't, I don't. There's two really close to me and so if I'm in that same vicinity, I might hit up the other one if there's a reason to go on that side of town. But I don't go every day or every couple days and scour around the entire Dollar Tree or whatnot. And I definitely am not the guy who's, who gets like every single copy of every single movie 10 times over because they're going to resell them and all that kind of stuff. That's just ridiculous. I get them for my own personal collection. If I don't like it, yeah, sure, I'll throw it up on eBay or whatever and sell it or do a trade with somebody. I've done that before as well. But I, it just irks me. I don't, know if that, I don't know if that's something that you all can relate to, but it just irks me when people... I mean, if you want to buy, if you want to buy one, one copy and then sell, sell it or whatever, that's fine, whatever. But it's when people who buy three, four, five, six copies of the same movie. I mean, that's just, that's like when people who do TTMs, who send five, six, seven, eight cards to one uh, ball player or whatever, and then wants all of them autographed, and they want to get it all for free. It's just ridiculous. It's the same thing of some buying, buy, somebody buying three or four DVDs or Blu-rays, and then they might not even watch the movie. They may not even like the movie. They may not even, even keep one for themselves. They just sell them all. So that means people like myself, who's a collector and enjoys film, now can't find them because you've completely depleted every Dollar Tree within a 20, 30, 40 mile radius or whatnot. I saw a couple of guys recently on eBay, I'm sorry, on eBay, on Facebook, post like, I'm not even kidding you, what looked like 100 and something copies of, or 100 different DVDs and Blu rays, and like each stack had two or three, four of each film. And I'm like, that's, this is, that just infuriates me. I don't know. How do you all feel about that? Where are you all at on that? So anyways, with that being said, that's my little rant. Let me get into the movie. Some of them I know who what they are. Some of them I've never seen before or heard about them. Some of them are just holes in the collection I didn't have. First up is Lies and Illusions. This is a um, uh, Cuba Good Jr. and Christian Slater along with, uh, who else is in here? Krista Campbell's in this. So there you go. Uh, so I haven't seen this movie before. I had heard about it, obviously. I'm not even for sure when it first came out. Does it say on the back here? I want to say this came out like the early 2000s, maybe. I'm not for sure. But it comes with a special feature, the making of Lies and Illusions featurette. And so anyways, guys, I don't know what's your all's thoughts. Have you seen it? Uh, your, uh, your views on it. So pretty excited for that one. Next up is Road Warrior. Mel Gibson, Mel Gibson joined. This has a commentary by George Miller and cinematographer Dean Similar, and an introduction by Leonard Moulton. So that's pretty awesome. There is the back. I did not have this on Blu-ray. I, I know I had a copy of it on DVD at some point. But I mean, I might say something here kind of controversial. But I love the Road War. I love um, the Mel Gibson George Miller versions of the '80s. Uh, I am not a fan of whatever Mad Maxine, whatever they try to do with uh, uh, whatever her name is, Charlize Theron. I don't like it. I, I didn't. I didn't like it. I thought there were some cool elements of it, but it's a Mad Max movie. But there was Mad Max was hot, hardly in it, so I feel like it was just a money grab from the studios because they were using that name. They should have changed it to uh, Furiosa or whatever her name was, and then people could make their decisions. And watch it or not, I felt like it was. I didn't think I didn't see the theater because I would have definitely pissed off. Uh, but because I, I felt like I got, you know, would have got screwed. It's like that whole thing with Hollywood is take a movie from the '80s or the '90s or even before and do the exact same movie basically, but except put females in it, and that's going to make the movie that much better. And I'm like, no, they've been doing that. Well, I don't know how how many movies have we seen like that? Star Wars, Ocean's Eleven, Ghostbusters, Mad Max, you know. How many movies uh, they do that now with? Almost every movie it feels like. They try to do that with a movie 
and then say, well, we're going to do the exact same movie, except just change all the characters to females. It doesn't work. But what does work is Sushi Girl, talking about Star Wars. Man, this one here, you got Mark Hamill, Noah Hathaway from The Never Ending Story. Remember that movie, Never Ending Story? Uh, we have James Duvall and Tony Todd. Uh, Tony Todd is great in this. This is an awesome movie. I had the DVD, did not have the Blu-ray. This is chuck full of uh, uh, special features. Documentaries, commentaries, commercials, promotional galleries, music videos, cast and crew interviews, alternate scenes and outtakes. It's a little bit of everything. So this is absolutely an awesome movie. It's a, um, like kind of like a bank heist gone wrong or something. And I've, I, it's been a while, but I, the way I understand it is like they, uh, someone spends like time in prison and they're all supposed to get together. I guess he has the money or something, but then he ends up not having the money and then it ends up going, let's just say sideways. But Mark Hamill, man, he is camping it up. Talking about camp. I just got done watching somebody on here on YouTube talk about the differences of camp, C-A-M-P, camp. And uh, that's definitely Mark Hamill camping it up in that movie. A movie from my childhood. This had, this had to come out like mid-80s, I would assume. I'm trying to look and see if it says what year. It does not. It's Secret of Nim. Love this movie as a kid growing up. The music was great in it. It's also has a commentary by the director, or the directors, I guess, and the secrets behind the featurette. Secrets behind the secret featurette. There we go. And a trailer. So this actually has quite a bit of stuff in it. So super pumped about this. Uh, this is a, th this movie here, uh, along with Fievel, American Tale, and there's a handful of other movies that were like not really Disney movies that really uh, struck me as a child. Uh, it just came out at the right time. I just was so impressed. I'm looking forward to deep diving into these movies and then having like a conversation about them later. And maybe you'll want to be here for the ride. Now, these next few movies I've never seen before. I've heard about them. And sometimes it's just based on who's in the movie. I know it might be a complete dumpster fire of a film. But, you know, I can't stop myself from watching certain uh, actors. And one of them is Nicolas Cage. Right here, you have Nicolas Cage. Benjamin Bratt is also in this. And this is called A Score to Settle. I have no idea, but it looks like it's a revenge type of movie. Uh... Frankie Carver is released from prison after serving 19 years of hard time. With only a short time left to live, Frankie must desperately try to make amends with his son he left behind while he plots a bloody course of revenge, tracking down his own gang to make them pay one by one. So it sounds a little bit like Kill Bill, except maybe not the uh, times closing in on you type of situation. So there you go. Score to settle. But, I mean, him, Johnny Depp, Bruce Willis, I know a lot of these guys, the, Johnny Depp does a lot more quality film, let's say, I feel like, but a lot of these other guys, like, you know, I, I can't stop watching movies with, with uh, Nicolas Cage in it, Bruce Willis, I just find them interesting, I know I just listened to Keith uh, over at a, a Serial of Midnight, he kind of was like, boo, on, uh, he's like, uh, you know, um, Bruce Willis' stock keeps dropping with every movie he makes. And I see where he's coming from, but there's a part that's like nostalgia. I love Bruce Willis growing up. Die Hard movies were like such a huge thing for me. I love the movie Hudson Hawk growing up. And so even though Bruce Willis definitely, his star has, has dimmed for sure. I just, Mel Gibson's another one. I just have to watch the movies. I have to at least give them a shot. I'm definitely not saying they're really good. Maybe they're complete trash, but I don't want to write them off because I just enjoy them as actors and just want to see what they do. Again, going to what I'm saying next is the Human well, the Humanity Bureau. The Humanity Bureau with Nicolas Cage. I don't recognize any of these other people in the movie. It doesn't let none of these people look familiar. So basically, he's the only one in this. Um. So, anyways, there you go. There's a making of the there's a making of the Humanity Bureau in this. Don't know if it's any good, but this comes with a slip cover, so that's kind of cool. All these movies, of course, of course, at the Dollar Tree are a dollar. So, just in case somebody somehow didn't get the memo on that, I did want to say on this one right here, a score to settle. There's a story and a character special feature on the set and sins of the father. So, it looks like a handful of uh, of uh, featurettes. 
Next one up is another guy, and actually a girl and guy, that I most will watch everything they're in because I'm just a huge fan of their work since the 90s when they were young or much younger. Well, one guy was more like a adult in the 90s, but this other girl was quite younger, and uh, we grew up with was right here, uh, Christina Ricci and John Cusack in dis uh, Distorted. Sorry, I went to a public school, so sometimes my reading suspect. So I don't know anything about this movie. I never, I, I, again, I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. So you have Christina Ricci, you got Brendan Fletcher's in this as well, John Cusack. So we'll see. I don't know. It looks interesting. Uh, I'm just trying to just design the art features, security system. So it looks like there's some kind of like, you know, cyber conspiracy, believe a pinnacle, maybe Baywatch. Okay. So it sounds like it's a conspiracy type movie unsuspecting residents are being brainwashed by a, a, a company called The Pinnacle. So we'll see. This one also comes with a slipcover. So that was cool. Sometimes the slipcovers are just worth the, the, the price of the of the film. But I, I am a huge Christina Ricci fan. Grew up with Adam's Family. Just, you know, just a huge fan of Christina Ricci. She did lots of movies I have enjoyed throughout the 90s. She definitely was a risk taker, which I appreciate because a lot of actresses during... Their younger years are scared to do too many big risks and worry about their career and maybe movies that will they'll not be offered in the future. But she was definitely would take independent films. She'd be in big budget movies. She did a lot of different stuff. John Cusack, I mean, this was like a 90s staple doing this great films. I'll say that for last, I think. Next up is The Protector 2. This is These are all rest of her DVDs. Tony Ja, RZA. What else is there to say? I have this, I believe, already. But I didn't have it in a sealed copy, and I don't think I had it with a slip cover. So I picked it up for that very reason. Um, I wanted to get it because I didn't have the slip cover for it. So this is one of those ones I might end up selling. But, of course, I needed a slip cover for the movie, so that's why I did it. And also, I might just hold on to it because I like them sealed. If I can get them for a dollar, like I'm not, in a big, I'm not in the business of helping anyone, keeping one sealed, unless I can get them for a dollar. Now, I'm not going on eBay or, you know, Arrow or you know, Kino Lorber or whatever, and buying two or three of the film just so I can have one to open and one to one to keep sealed. I'm not it's not that deep for me. So there you go. Next up is a nineties treasure. I cannot believe this is on here. All thirteen episodes of season one on D V D for the first time with an interview with Christine Taylor. If you know what I'm talking about, we're talking about Hey Dude. But yes, hey dude. Holy guacamole. I used to come home every day from school, it felt like, and would watch this on Nickelodeon. Back when Nickelodeon was made for kids. Um, I, I would watch, I don't know if the episodes just came on every afternoon, or that was just their time slot, and it, it would be like a new episode every week or what. But I remember coming home and jumping in the, the on the couch with whatever my Mountain Dew or whatever and start watching Hey Dude when I was in middle school. And I thought it was such a great TV show. Of course, it was goofy and silly. That song was so contagious. Sometimes I think I like the show just because of the song, the theme song, which is so good. Oh, here's a Blu-ray I must have skipped over. Whoops. This one is Officer Down. So this just looks like all kinds of crazy. It's for Magnet Releasing. It comes with a slipcover. If I can get it out of there, Maybe. Okay, as I'm like ripping, it's oh I see what it is. It's like stuck to the thing here. Well, anyways, you all can see it has a slip cover. I'm not gonna try to rip it in half. So there you go, the back. I've heard things about this. It says if you thought Deadpool was sick, you ain't seen nothing yet. Crime never sleeps, but justice never dies. So we have Kim Coates in here, which uh, is a uh, he's a, he was in. A, I mean, he's in lots of stuff, but. I mean, I think what most people I can think of him as recent time is uh, Sons of Anarchy. He was in Sons of Anarchy. Uh, let me try to see if there's anybody else in here. Allison Lohman's in here. Meadow Williams, that she sounds familiar. There's a few other guys or gals sounds familiar. Tyler Ross sounds familiar. I'm not for sure, but Officer Dan, I've heard this. I've heard from a lot of people saying this is a pretty good movie. It looks like a straight up exploitation film. I mean, we got like. The guy who's like, obviously, apparently, either he, he is a police officer or was dressed up like one. You have a, a nun with a shotgun. You have some black kung fu guy here with, like, 80s visor sunglasses. 
I love it. I love it. This is like some straight up, it's like, I don't know. It was like a dumpster fire of a movie, and I cannot wait to get into it. Uh, that's the kind of good stuff I love. Next up is uh, Scott Adkins, Andy On, and Truong Knock On. I'm sure I mispronounced it. And Abduction. This looks like an interesting movie. I'm a huge fan of Scott Adkins. He was in lots of like kickboxer type movies. He kind of is like the modern day Jean-Claude Van Damme, if I can be so bold to say. But you have uh, Scott Adkins. He's a really good martial artist. He is the real deal from what I can see. The movies I've seen him, like, he knows what he's doing. He's not, like, just, you know, looking good on camera. Like, he actually does no martial arts. So we'll see. It looks like it's some sort of maybe zombie or I don't know what. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's not a zombie. It's like, it looks like some sort of, I don't know. If you look at the back there, that, that dude looks like he's, like, infected or some kind of ghastly creature. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. But we'll see. This one obviously comes with a slip cover as well, but the stickers on the backs keep me from doing it, but it does have the sticker on there. This is from Shout Factory. A lot of these are shouting in um, and uh, Magnet. Next up is a movie that I caught a little bit of on um, on Shudder. This is Boar, when I still had Shudder. Uh, this has quite a few people in this movie that I wanted to go see. Again, it goes back to what I was telling you before. Uh, is like some character. Sometimes there's actors or actresses I just enjoy I like Bill Mosley. He's in here. Nathan Jones is in this. John Jarrett, who I think it was in lots of Australian uh, movies, uh, horror movies. John Jarrett. I uh, wasn't he one of the killers in uh, an Australian movie from like back in the early two thousands or something. I can't, I can't remember the name of the movie all of a sudden. But anyways, uh, Bill Mosley, like I said, there's <coughs> excuse me. Anyways, so. I'm interested to see it. I'm a big Animal Attack film fan. I just did a video, a few videos back if you want to watch, where I talk about Grizzly, Day of the Animals, and Devil Dog, Hound from Hell. I'm a huge Animal Attack movie fan. So, I mean, sometimes when they're, like, really CGI, I'm not a fan. Like, a lot of those, like, Sharknado or Shark Octopus. And, I mean, like, I wanted to at least have some semblance of not trying too hard with this. All this is the CGI, you know, like 1995 video game style graphics. Talking about old school Animal Attack movie. I cannot believe this was even sitting there. This is the only one there that was left or they brought in. I don't know. But it is the Deadly Bees. First time on DVD. I just love it. This is definitely a 19, no, 1966. So excited by the smell of fear, they inflict their fatal stings. Oh my gosh, guys. Come on. Frank Finley, Susan Lee, Susanna Lee, Guy Doman. I'm not going to act like I know who those people are. I do not. But I am so looking forward to this. I mean, dude, this chick has a like a Metallic cocktail right here. She's getting ready to burn it to the ground. She's so scared. But, I mean, this is going, this is like right up my I love 60s and 70s cinema, 80s cinema, and 90s cinema. I mean, after that, it's kind of hit and miss for me. Like, you know, of course, I still watch all kinds of dreck. And sometimes I'm surprised by it, but not all the time. Next up, again, this is tons of actors I like and respect. The hollow point, good men can do bad things. You have here Patrick Wilson, Ed McShane, Jim Belushi, Lynn Collins, and John Liz Guamo. I mean, this is an all-star cast of characters. It's a, it's a, it has like a Western feel if you look on the back here so it definitely has like a modern day western vibe going for it um talking about mexican cartel it's a retired sheriff violent tendencies um patrick wilson has a dark past so there's a lot going on there's a cartel hitman atticus um so yeah so we'll see it looks interesting again uh it's a visually striking matchup of modern western with a bloody thriller that's kind of what I was uh, just saying. So, yeah. I haven't really mentioned if any of these other movies have special features, but I'm not going to go back. With, kind of go with the Western vibe. This is the fourth season, so I, don't, I need the first three before I can watch this, but Hell on Wheels. I watched the first season when I still had cable de a decade, 12 years ago. I don't even know how long it's been. I cut the cord before it was cool to cut the cord. Um, I don't even have any streaming services, guys. That's how, like hardcore I am to <clears throat> be off the grid when it comes to 
not playing the games with these like you know big tech companies and all these you know distributors of film and television. I can't do it. So Hell on Wheels, I saw the first season. I really liked it a lot. I think there was. Uh, let me see. They have some of the actors on here. I can't remember everybody's name. I think Common was in this. Of course, this guy here. I can't remember. There's this Irish actor. He's in like, he was in like The Rock. Um, not the, do you smell? Not that rock. But the one with Nicolas Cage, right? And then, uh, and uh, Sean Connery, uh, R.I.P. So uh, I can't remember that gentleman's name. But anyway, so I like the first season. I'm assuming there's, you know, every season's going to be similar. And uh, they're making a, I believe they're making a railroad from, like, it's like the, uh, Pacific, what is it, like the Pacific Continental Railroad or something like that. They're making a railroad from point A to point B, and um, and uh, they hire him, I believe, to kind of like keep things moving and keep people safe, and there's always kind of shenanigans with Indians and the people not wanting to work and, you know, bad guys, and, you know, every episode has to have something going on or else it wouldn't be interesting to watch. Next up, I, I don't, did not believe this is actually a, a thing, but this was cool. They have nine movies before they were Bond, which was like, I, it, it shocked me all to heck because you got Daniel Craig, you got Timothy Dalton, Roger Moore, and there's other actors and actresses that are in this. And so this is a two-disc set. So Bond man, Dave, Daniel Craig was in Love and Rage. This is... Um, I don't know. This is a movie, I guess, from the 90s, I'm assuming. Then we have uh, Roger Moore in Gold. Then we have Timothy Dalton in Passions Away. Then Barbara Bach in Legend of Sea Wolf. A tyrannical sea captain torments his crew unmercifully in this Jack Landon adaptation. Interesting. Then we have Lana Wood in Nightmare in Batum County. Now, I remember that one. That's a kind of a, That's kind of an exploitation film, I think. A pair of college girls get a flat tire in a small southern town and help, and with the help of a sleazy local sheriff, end up in prison. See? This is the reason I got this. Like, who knew these movies were even on there? And then, listen to this Ursula Andr uh, Andrus in The Slave of the Cannibal Gods. Now, if that is not exploitation, I don't know what is. Somewhere deep within the dense, foreboding jungles of New Guinea, an anthropologist on assignment has mysteriously vanished. His wife Susan Stevenson and her brother Arthur go in to search for him. Yeah, right. Then we got Michelle Yeoh in Silverhawk, which is a great, I think, late mid to late 90s action like superhero movie. Then, I hope you're sitting down for this, Christopher Lee in The Satanic Rites of Dracula. Do what? Yes. And that is awesome. And then we have, lastly, Richard Keough in The Phantom Planet. That's actually in black and white. It's that old. So, I can't believe this was there for a dollar. There are so many movies in here that I that I either have seen or want to see. All underneath uh, one, two, or two discs set for its one schmeckle. All day. And then lastly, I say this one for last because it probably means the most to me. And most people could care less about this. But this is called The Source Travel the Road. And so... An absolute jaw-dropping look at the war on drugs. And it's very interesting because these guys here are Christian missionaries. And um, one of the, their name is Tim Scott, and then the other one is Will Decker. Tim Scott's up here, Will Decker's down here. And they're missionaries, they travel around the world, and they go to places that like no one goes to. Like, we're talking way off the grid. And they film, they have a show called Travel the Road. And I don't know if it's still going on. This thing is from 2011, but this was a big deal about a decade, 15 years ago. And I had the first season on DVD. Even if you're not a Christian, if you have no interest in Christianity, God, whatever, Jesus Christ, they it, it, just for the pure travel experience, just the, the, the cultural uh, way the world is in other parts of the world, they go places, like I said, most places, most people do not go. They're not trying to eat their food. They're like, they're like doing travel channels and and Food Network channels will be like eating weird stuff. Like they're going to where the people are. Granted, it is with the perspective of sharing Christ with people. But I mean, even if you just cut that part, I have no interest in that. And it's not just 24-7 about that. There's a lot of just showing how these people live. 
the dangers of it all, the, the beautiful topography, the country, the cultures, the language. It is just for people who just want to see the world. It is a great inside look at that. And I've never seen this before. I mean, it won a lot of awards probably on the Christian circuit. But it tells you, it says, deep inside the jungles of Colombia and Peru, they go on the, they go on the hot trail for cocaine traffickers. It's a four-part documentary series, and it's an unprecedented look at the global drug trade. So, a guy, so guys, I mean, if you're interested in something like this, I would highly recommend it. The source, travel the road. I mean, again, if you can find it for a dollar at the good at the Goodwill, well, maybe at the Goodwill too, but at the Dollar Tree, it'd be worth. I would say it's definitely worth taking a look at. Like I said, if nothing else, just for the cultural uh, aspects of it, it's fantastic. I'm looking forward to watching this. So, guys, hope you all enjoyed the um, the show, the the video. I know it was long winded, but guess what? I kind of want to talk about the movies a little bit more than just say I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this, and I'm done. So leave comments below. Let me know what you think. I'd, I'd love to have the conversation back and forth. And until next time, peace.